for today. Uh, on Canvas, I posted the tutorial on how you solve a uh, body value problem using a value method. So if you watch it, you will know the procedure. So I, I'm gonna explain to you again. Now, so you, you want to solve these equations, right? Uh, plus m is equal to zero on uh, zero, say one. The boundary condition that you have is u zero is u one is zero. This is the equation that you want to solve. All right. So, <clears throat> so we have three steps. Step number one. Step number one is to find the basis for the solution space. All right. To find the basis. <laughs> <coughs> so what is the basis? The basis will be the basis will be uh, the function <coughs> phi n, right? That solve this equation. You have L of phi n plus lambda n phi n <coughs> is equal to zero with the same boundary condition. All right? So you have phi n at zero will be phi n at one, and this is also zero. Right? <coughs> lambda n, lambda n are constant. Um, and they are the eigen they are the eigen value, eigen value. <coughs> right? So you want to solve a boundary value problem? L u plus f is equal to zero, right? The techniques now is first you have to find a basis for the function at for the solution space. So the basis will be all the function phi n that satisfy this equation, L phi n plus lambda n phi n is zero with the same boundary condition, right? So after you solve this, there are two cases. Case number one. If L is auto a joy, uh, is self a joy, or auto a joy, Then phi n and phi m are orthogonal, meaning that you have the integral from 0 to n, phi n of x, phi m of x, dx is 0. Right? Then you have an orthogonal basis. <coughs> orthogonal basis. All right? The first case is the case when the operator L is self choy If it is self choy then all of the phi n and phi m, they are orthogonal, which means that you have an orthogonal basis. Then this is fine. This is easy. This is case number two. If L is not self choy all right? If L is not server choy, what you do is, is you find the W such that phi n and phi m are orthogonal with respect to this way. Right? So you have to modify the inner product so that you have an orthogonal basis in the new inner product. So then in this case, you have integral from 0 to 1, wx, phi n x, phi m x dx is 0, right? So phi m is orthogonal basis. Orthogonal basis. with the new 
new inner product. Alright? Screen. Um, now I explain again. What is the purpose of step one? Step one is to try to find uh, an, a basis for the solution space. You, when you have a basis, you can expand the solution on this solution space. Alright? So how do you find a basis? You have to solve the eigenvalue problem. In other words, you have to find a free n such that there is a constant lambda n and that satisfies this system, all right? In this case, free n is the eigenfunction and lambda n is the eigenvalue, <coughs> right? Now, now, there are two cases. If L is self-choice, all of the free n and free m are orthogonal. So this is the theorem, but I am not going to prove it. Uh, because the proof require a lot of uh, lectures, all right? So, but if L is self choice, all of the phi n and phi m are orthogonal with respect to the classical <coughs> inner product. So the classical inner product is the integral from zero to one of phi n, phi m, dx, right? So, <coughs> so then you have an orthogonal basis with respect to this inner product. Now, the second case, if L is not a silver choice, uh, you have to find a W such that phi n and phi m, they are orthogonal uh, in this new inner product. Questions? Uh, what is the W for this case? There's still a W1, right? Can you sign both at the back of the paper, please? So in, in the first case, there is still a W, but W is still, uh, W is 1. For the first case, W is 1. So when you check and you see that W is 1, or W prime is 0, which means that you are in the self choice case, right? Step number 3, uh, step number 2, you expand. <coughs> so you expand F as the sum when N is going from 1 to infinity of Fn Fn in which Fn can be computed like uh, F Fn W divided by Fn Fn W. All right? So in the, so the next step is, uh, is that you try to expand the solution F, uh, the, the source term F on this basis, right? So you have a formula for Fn, which is the inner product of F and Fn and, and the inner product of Fn and Fn, right? Now, you have, after you expand this, this is given, all right? So we're in the outer choice case, W is, is one, right? So this formula is for both cases, outer choice and non uh, non choice, right? So in the outer choice case, W is one, right? So after you expand this, you have a formula for you, right? Then you're gonna, step number three, you're gonna have what? You're gonna have u is a sum when n is going from one to infinity. u n, phi n, and now you need to find u, right? You need to find u n. All right? So in order to find yeah, u n, you have one. You have l of u plus l is zero, meaning that, meaning that, um, I'm gonna plug all of this here. So I'm gonna have l of the sum when n is going from one to infinity of u n, phi n, plus uh, the sum when n is going from one to infinity, f n phi n is going to be zero, right? <clears throat> so, so that equation, right? So, so now I'm going to explain to you the meaning uh, of uh, how do you, uh, where's the formula for u n coming from, all right? So this is the equation. You plug, you plug u and f into the equation, you have this. Right? So now I'm gonna 
put L into Pn because Un is a constant and Pn is an operator, right? So you have N is going from 1 to infinity of Un, L of Pn plus uh, interval from 1 to infinity of N, Pn is 0, right? But L of Pn is minus, lam minus lambda and Pn, so you have this is um, Un <coughs> minus lambda n Pn plus n is going from 1 to infinity Mn Pn. Right? Expand again. After you expand F on a new basis, Mn is computed using this formula, right? Mn is computed using this formula. You want to find Un, which is the coefficient of this expansion. How do you find Un? You plug Un and Fn into the equation. You have U is the sum of Un, Pn. You have operator here. Um, and here you have Fn, Pn. So now this is the operator. So I'm going to put it to Pn. So this gives me L of Pn, right? Then I'm going to have U of L of Pn plus uh, F and Pn. So now using this relation here, yeah. I'm going to replace this, all right? So now I have Un minus and Pn, F and Pn, right? So which means that I can re remove all of the, all of the, all of the sum. And I identify the coefficient, right? So now I remove Pn, and then Un will be Fn dividing by lambda n. This is where the formula that we are using coming from. Right? So I explain again. So uh, the key idea of solving this equation is that you have to solve for the eigenvalue problem. The reason that you solve uh, the eigenvalue problem is to find a basis for the system, all right, for the equation. You have to find a function phi n such that L of phi n plus lambda n is equal to zero, and n, phi, uh, lambda n is a constant. So those are called eigenvalues, right? So, the, so we need this relation. Because when you do the expansion, you're going to reduce from L of n to minus lambda n of n, right? After you do the expansion. And, and because of this, when you identify the coefficient, you have this plus this is equal to 0. You have u, lambda n is fn over lambda n. And this is why you solve the eigenvalue problem, right? Now, after you solve the eigenvalue problem, there are two cases. If uh, the operator is self adjoint all of the eigenvalues, uh, eigenfunctions are orthogonal with respect to the weight 1 in this inner product, <coughs> right? Um, if it is not self adjoint you have to compute a weight. Why do you compute a weight? You want to compute a weight because you want to compute this constant Fn, right? This weight is going to be used right here. So when you have the weight, you expand the solution in terms of the eigenfunctions. The coefficient of the eigenfunction can be computed by dividing um, Fpn and Pnpn, right, with this new weight. Now, how do you find Un? Un can be computed by using this formula. And the reason for this formula is because when you do the expansion, when you do the expansion over here, you plug L Pn and you get, right? So, so you do L up Un Pn, F and Pn, right? Uh, so to be easier, uh, this is the expansion, right? So let us remove the sum, right? So I have this expansion, now I remove the sum. Right, so this is what we have to make it easier. 
This is not precise. Uh, this is not correct. But let us explain in a in an easier way. So so when you plug the uh, the UN into the equation, you have the two series. What I'm doing is I remove the sum. So I just consider one coefficient, right? So then you you have UN LPN plus FN PN, right? Is zero. Now LPN is minus lambda n PN because of this this um, equation, right? Which means that UN is FN over lambda n. This is the, the key. Right, so now let us go to uh, the practice problem. All right, so last time we were at this point. We were at this point. We were trying to solve uh, T square V second plus T V prime plus Mx uh, plus G T V zero on one two E, right? And um, and the initial condition is V one is V E is zero, and G T is something that we discussed later, right? So after <coughs> shifting, this is after shifting. After shifting, this is what you have. All right. After shifting, you have this equation. Uh, so what is the operator in this case? Right. Can you say at, at, at the back of the paper, please? So, uh, so this v is a function of t, right? Given g, you try to solve for v. Right. So given g. We try to find V. All right. So the operator will be this: uh, the first two term. You have T square V second plus T V prime. All right. So I'm gonna have this formulation, right? So I have L V plus G T is zero on one two e and v at one and v at e will be zero. Alright? So in this case, in this case you see that so after you do the shifting, this is the equation that you have with the new variable t. I recall that t is x plus one in the previous lecture. Right? Now, so step number one is what? After you identify, after you shift, you have v second v prime g. So g is given, which means that this term is the operator because this is the terms that contain a, a v, right? So which means that this is the operator, and we have this equation. All right. So. Step number one is what? Running away. Yes. Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, we have one. Right. Can, can you sign the back of the paper, please? Step number one. Oh, find, you have to find a basis. All right. You have to find a basis. Uh, so you have to solve Pn plus lambda n. Pn is zero on one two e, and Pn at zero is Pn of one is of e uh, of one and e is zero, right? Sometimes we don't write n, right? So sometimes we write sometimes, but it's sometimes we write l of e plus lambda v v0 on 1e and v1 is equal to ve and this is 0 so this is without the index e uh, index n 
right? So they are the same. You have to find uh, phi n and lambda n such that this relate, uh, you have this equation. This is the eigenvalue problem. Sometimes we, we, we throw away the n, but this is the same problem, right? It's clear? Questions? So basically, step one, you have to find a basis. Uh, you have L of phi n plus, plus lambda n phi n is zero, and phi n at one and e, they're both zero. Sometimes you drop the n, and you have L of phi n plus lambda, lambda phi is zero on one e, and phi one is phi is zero. With, right, so we can write with or without the index. Now, uh, now let us try to solve uh, this problem. So you have t squared, p second plus t, p prime. So this is L. plus lambda phi is zero on one e and phi one and phi they are both zero. All right? Yes? When we did this last part. Yes, this is what we did. Can you do step two? Sorry? Can you do step two? Yes, I want to recall. Okay. Uh, the test next class, we haven't finished step two at all. Yes, I'm gonna do it in five minutes, all right? But I have to, to, to recall what, I, what we did in the previous class, all right? So, so now, you have to find the basis for this problem, all right? Uh, so you have to, to solve L phi plus lambda phi is zero on one E, and phi one and phi two, they're both zero, all right? So this is what we did in the previous class. And we found what? We found that lambda n, lambda n, lambda n is n pi, Square um, and and um, phi n will be sinus of n pi log t. All right, it's clear. So this is what we did in the previous class. We found a basis with um, with eigen values. Right. So we also found that this is not an auto join operator, right? So in order to find, so you, you don't need to check self join. You have to to solve for the W, and then if W is one, you know that this is self join, right? So what you do is to find W is the following. W, this way, uh, you divide by W. Three second plus T W. Prime, right? So the key techniques here is to divide by W and multiply by, by W, right? And you set this derivative to be the other term. T squared W prime is equal to TW, right? So in the previous class, we solved this problem and W is 1T, 1 over T. All right? So to conclude, to solve for this problem, the first step is to try to find the eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions. Uh, so the eigenvalue and the eigenfunction are computed in the previous class, and we have this formula. So W was also computed. The way that you compute W is that you divide one over the uh, one over W here, and you multiply W here, and you set the derivative of this guy to be this guy. So you don't need to change shell join. Uh, because if you f if you find here w is equal to one, which means that you have a self joint operator. This is what you have in the homework, right? So in the homework, uh, you have what? The homework you have w is equal to one, right? So which means that that operator is self joint. Um, in this case, it is one over t, right? So now the next step is to compute. Step number two, you want to expand GT, like GN, phi NT, right? All right, 
So, yes, so G will be what G is. GT will be log T. For T belong to 1 square root of E and 0 otherwise. Alright? So this is uh, what we have to do. You have to expand G on this new basis with the weight with W, right? So now G, GN, we have the formula over there which is G W, uh, G phi W dividing by phi phi W and this is N. Right? So now we have to compute the coefficient of this G, right? So how do you compute this uh, coefficient? You use the formula. You multiply G with W with this way, uh, uh, G with phi n with this way, and then you multiply phi n and phi n with W. All right? Right. So. So. By doing this trick, you found that W is 1 over T, right? Now, GN will be, so first I'm going to compute G, PN, with W. And this gives you, <coughs> interval from 1 to, uh, 1 to E, of G, uh, log T, 1 over T, DT. <coughs> right? Uh, so log uh, what sinus of sinus of n pi log t. Yes. Um, with the GT boundary condition, that's supposed to be e. You meant for that to be e. One one e or is it one square root of e? That's so, so the interval that we have is from one to e, right? But the function is log t from 1 square root of e, and it's going to be 0 <coughs> when t is going from um, square, square root of e to e. Alright? Where do you get the square root of e from? <coughs> this is, the, the, uh, this is the, the source term that was given for you. This is what... Um, it's, I, I don't compute square root of e. But, but then we take the integral from 1 to e or 1 to square root of e? It is going to be from 1 to e for g, okay. right? But it's going to reduce to log t from 1 to square root of e, right? So I'm going to write for you. Uh, uh, this is from 1 to square root of e, log t, 1 over t, sinus, log t, dt, right? And the other one is 0. Square root of e to e, this is 0, 1 over t. Uh, Sinus of n pi log t dt, right? Okay. Yes. The w is supposed to be negative one over t. It's one over t, right? It's one over t. You you replace one over t here, you get t. So the derivative is one. So t times one over t is one. So it's one over t, right? <coughs> so this is what we found in the previous class. When you solve this equation, you get 1 over t, right? Other questions? Right? So, so you have to compute uh, the inner product of g and phi n with respect to this weight, 1 over t, right? So, so the inner product is what? The inner product is g, so this is phi n, and this is w, right? So you have to do this integration. Uh, so this is the function that you are given and you, you are supposed to compute a coefficient with respect to these places, all right? So you replace log t from 1 to square root of e and 0 from square root of e to e, right? So this is going to be 0. The other term is 1. So you observe that now 1 over t is the derivative of log t, right? 
So this integral, <coughs> basically you can re replace it by 1 over t dt. Right? So then you have 1 over t dt will be d of log t. All right? Now, this interval will be what? Will be interval from 1 to e log t sinus <coughs> of n pi log t d of log t. Now I'm going to change variable. And when I change the variable, I'm going to have to change the limit. All right? So I'm going to put log t to be So I'm gonna put log t to be what? Log t to be a new variable y. Alright? So t is going from 1, meaning that log t will be 0. T is equal to e, meaning that y is log t. Can it be square root e? Uh square root e, yes, thank you. This is log of square root of b, and this is one half. All right. So, so what is log? Log is this power. This is log. Right. <coughs> right. So, yes. All right. So I'm gonna change that uh, interval into <coughs> interval from one up from zero. Two one half uh, y sinus of n pi uh, y dy. All right. It's good. So I explain again. Now I have to take the inner product between g and pn with respect to this w. All right. So what I do is I multiply g with Pn with W. W is one half and Pn is this, this guy. Now I replace uh, G to be log T from one square root of T and zero from square root of T is T. This guy is zero. So the left over is this integral, right? I observe that one over T is log T prime, so one over T dt is D log T. So I write into to go un, under this form. Right? So, so now, I do the change of value. I put y to be log t. When t is 1, y is 0. When t is square root of e, y is 1 half. So I'm going to have integral from 0 to 1 half, y sinus n, y, uh, n pi y dy. Right? And I have to do this integration. Right? So I think we did this once in class, right? Uh, but let, let us try to do it again. All right, so now this integration will be y. This integration will be integral from 0 to 1 half y d of uh, cosine of n pi y divided by, divided by n pi minus. All right? This is because uh, cosine of n pi y over n pi Prime is sinus of n pi y. Right? So you observe that this is uh, the derivative of this guy, which means that you can write this under this form. Right? Now, you write, uh, you use uh, integration by part, you have this n pi, and you replace this from 0 <coughs> to 1 half. And the other guy will give you minus plus uh, this minus integral from zero to one half uh, y uh, minus of course and that's of n pi y of n pi dy right so this is a db 
this AB uh, minus um, BDA. All right, so I have a tutorial video on integration with and this is how we do it, right? So, sin s is the derivative of minus cos s over n time. So, so this is why I have b of cos s, right? Now you do integration by fact, so the first term gives you this one, and the other term gives you this one. You have a minus and a minus. So this is a, and this is db. So you multiply with a and b minus bda, all right? So minus y cos s of n pi over n pi, 0 to 1. And so this minus and the other guy will give me a plus, right? <coughs> so then the antiderivative of this guy is 1 over n pi squared. Sine s of n pi y from 0 to 1 half, all right? Questions? Uh, so after you do this computation, you, you can find something like 2 over n pi. 2 over n pi square, uh, 1 over n pi square, sine s of n pi over 2 minus 1 over n pi, cosine s of n pi over 2. Right? You just plug in the values and get this uh, result. Right? <coughs> Questions? So this is how you do uh, the first, uh, the first, this guy. 